Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about a daily current affair MCQ series in which what we do we daily discuss MCQs from current affair perspective. So today is 21st November so let's see what are the questions for today. So the first question is consider the following statements. Besides the SPG, VIPs in India are protected by other security forces as well. Second, the levels of security cover are determined by the threat perception around the in individual. Uh, third, the highest level of security cover is the Z plus category followed by Z, Y and X category. So we have uh, to choose that which of these statements is not correct. So please note the word which is not correct. So we have to basically choose uh, the, uh, that statement which is incorrect. So friends all of these statements are correct. So certainly uh, yes the uh, SPG uh, about, apart from this uh, SPG VIPs are also protected by other security uh, forces and level of security is determined by threat perception. So categories are also uh, in this manner. So explanation is D is none of them. So all of these statements are correct. So genesis of SPG uh, is in uh, uh, basically after the assassination of the Prime Minister of India that is uh, uh, the former Prime Minister of India that is Indira Gandhi uh, in March 1985 committee on the recommendations of a committee a special unit was created for this purpose under the cabinet secretariat and initially it was called special protection unit and renamed as special protection group in April 1985. So subsequently SPG act uh, was notified in June 19, 1988 to provide for the constitution and regulation of an armed force of the union for providing approximate security to the prime minister of india and for matters connected there within uh, connected therewith so spg act uh, defined proximate security as protection provided from close quarters during journey by road rail aircraft watercraft or on foot or any other means of transport and to include include the places of functions engagements residence or halt so coverage uh, was uh, spg was later on extended apart from the prime minister to the, to the prime, former prime ministers of india and members of their immediate families through an amendment after the assassination of rajiv gandhi in may 1991 so categories of security besides spg vips are also protected by other security forces so levels of uh, security are determined by threat perception. So Z plus uh, category is the highest cover of security followed by Z, Y, X category. So highest level of cover, the largest number of personnel protecting the individual. So uh, 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 basically number of personnel increase and also there is uh, uh, upgradation in the quality of protection. So roughly 24 to 36 personnel with automatic weapons are deployed for Z plus category protectives and uh, 60 to 20 personnel guard Z security protectives. So elite black cat commanders of the NSG are deployed to, uh, to protect VIP for whom the threat perception is the highest. So governance is basically this uh, protection group is uh, governed by cabinet secretariat of India. So SPG chief is an officer of the rank of inspector general. So tenure and uh, tenure of security cover to former PM uh, uh, under this SPG security is provided to former PM and the members of his immediate fam family for a period of one year from the date on which the former PM ceased to hold office and beyond one year based on the level of threat as decided by the central government. However, the security to them can be extended in the case of the threat or uh, in case the threat is grave is of grave and continuing nature. Now let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First plague is an infectious disease caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis, a zoonotic bacteria usually found in small mammals and their fleas. Second, it is transmitted between animals through fleas. So we have to choose that which of these is correct. Is are correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct. Yes, plague is an infectious disease and it is spread by bacteria. Oh, sorry, it is caused by your senior pastries, a zoonotic bacteria is uh, it is. So it is found uh, usually found in small mammals and their fleas. So transmitted between uh, uh, animals through fleas. So cause is uh, this uh, as I have told you. So transmission is transmitted through uh, and uh, through uh, between animals through fleas. So humans can be in, uh, infected through uh, the the bite through the bite of infected vector fleas unprotected contact with the infectious bodily fluids or contaminated material. The inhalation of respiratory droplets, small particles from a patient with pneumonic plague. 
So two forms of plague infection are there depending on the root of infection, bubonic plague and demonic plague. So bubonic is basically is caused by bite of an infected flea. So plague baculus y pestisus enters at the bite and travels to the nearest lymph node where it replicates itself. So human to human trans uh, transmission of uh, bubonic uh, uh, plague is rare and then there is pneumonic plague lung based plague it is the most virulent form of plague and any person with pneumonic plague may transmit the disease by droplets to other human uh, beings so treatment is nowadays plague is easily treated with antibiotics and the use of standard precautions to prevent acquiring infection so uh, basically uh, uh, this this plague is basically it is an animal disease found in uh, on, on all continents except oceania so since 1990s most human cases have uh, occurred in africa so three most endemic countries are the democratic republic of congo madagascar and peru so timeline is historically plague was responsible for widespread pandemics with high mortality so it was known as black death during the 14th century causing more than 50 million deaths in europe so between 2010 to 2015 there were th uh, th 32 48 cases worldwide leading to 584 deaths a fatality rate of 18 percent according to world health organization so China has reported a third case of bubonic plague after two other plague cases were revealed last week but the disease remains real despite its fearsome reputation authorities say the cases appear unrelated now let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements first the Indian performing rights society uh, is a representative body of artists including music owners composers lyricists, and publishers of the music which collects royalties due to the artists if they are uh, work is used anywhere from a wedding to a new year function or on radio or tv so the body was set up in 1969 and registered as copyright society in 2017 under the amended copyright act 1957 so we have to choose that which of these statements are correct let me tell you from both of these statements are correct so indian performing rights society it is a representative body of artists so they these artists include music owners composers and also be their lyricists and publishers of music so they collect royalties due, due to the artists if their work is used anywhere from a wedding to a new year function or on radio or TV. So the body was set up in 1969 and re-registered as a copyright society in 2017 under the amended Copyright Act 1957. So IPRS has its offices in Mumbai. So it has both civil and criminal remedies available to it under the Copyright Act. So extra knowledge is that economic offenses wing of the Mumbai police has registered an FIR against Yashraj Films private limited for alleged criminal breach of trust and failure to pay an estimated rupees 100 crore in royalty to several music composers and writers since 2012. So FIR was registered on a complaint by Indian Perform Performing Rights Society. Now let's move to the next question. Which of the following statements are correct? Total solar eclipse, the entire central partition of the uh, post, sorry, portion of the sun is blocked out by the moon. This ring is known as the ring of fire. Uh, second partial solar eclipse, only part of the sun's surface is blocked out. Third, uh, annular solar eclipse, the sun is covered in such a way that only small ring like silver of light is seen from the sun's disk. So we have to choose that which of these is correct. Let me tell you friends that answer is D. So as is, uh, this may, may be quite clear due to its names. So annular solar eclipse is in it, sun is covered in such a way that only small ring like silver of light is seen from the sun's disk. So the, the ring is known as ring of fire, so statement first is incorrect. So uh, sorry, the, uh, it is my mistake, I have said all are correct. So first statement is wrong, uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, it is only second and third statement that are correct. So extra knowledge is that uh, Cheru Vathur in uh, uh, Kasaragod district Kerala is one of the three places in the world where the solar eclipse will be most clearly seen on uh, December 26, 2019. Uh, and it will be annular solar eclipse, uh, solar eclipse in which the ring of fire, a characteristic of this kind of solar eclipse, could be clearly observed. So solar eclipse is of different types, so you can read it by pausing the video. Because already 9 minutes have passed and we have just covered 4 questions. Now let's move to the next question. Next is which of the following statements are correct? First, the Krishna River is the second biggest river in peninsular India after Godavari River. Second, it originates near Mahabaleshwar, uh, Satara in Maharashtra. Third, uh, Patisima Left Irrigation Project is the first river linking, river linking project in India connecting Godavari with Krishna through Polavaram Right Canal. It will divert surplus Godavari water to Krishna River. So we have to choose that which of these statements is 
correct so let me tell you friends that all of these statements are correct so krishna river it is the second like biggest river in peninsular india after godavari so it originates in mahabaleshwar so it is in maharashtra and it runs from uh, from, from four states uh, that is north karnataka and the rest of the uh, rest of its 1300 km journey in telangana andhra and then it empties into <coughs> Bengal, Bay of Bengal. So tributaries are Tungabhadra, Malaprabha, Koyana, Bhima, uh, Ghatprabha, Yarla, Varna, Dindi, Musi, and Dudgana, Dudganga. So Patti Sima left irrigation project is the first river interlinking project in India connecting Godavari with Krishna through Polavaram uh, right canal. So it will divert surplus Godavari water to Krishna river. So extra knowledge is that several floods uh, in the region have created a need for repair and maintenance of uh, Sri Sailam Dam. So Sri Sailam Dam is constructed across the Krishna river in Andhra Pradesh. So it is uh, located in Nalamala Hills. Now let's move to the next question. Next is which of the following statements are correct about Forest Rights Act? The act was passed in 2006. It, it deals with the rights of forest dwelling communities over land and other resources. The act grants legal recognition to the rights of traditional forest dwelling communities, partially correcting the injustice caused by the forest laws. So all of these statements are correct, friends. Uh, you might be aware of the fact uh, that uh, these uh, uh, forest dwellers were basically uh, uh, they were put to great deal of ordeal uh, during the uh, during the during the coming of the British rule because uh, their uh, forests were commercialized when they expand when the British rule expanded its reach. So it, uh, in in uh, so in uh, and this also continued even after independence. So in 2006, six special uh, act was brought in to protect the rights of these forest dwellers. So rights are there title rights ownership to land that is being farmed by tribals or forest uh, dwellers subject to maximum of four hectares and then ownership is only for land that is actually being cultivated by the concerned family meaning that no new lands are granted so use rights to the uh, minor forest produce to grazing areas to pastoralist roots extra so relief and development rights are there rehabilitation in case of illegal eviction or forced displacement and to basic communities subject to restrictions for forest production so why in news because Mizzou government has passed a resolution revoking the implementation of scheduled uh, tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest uh, uh, rights act 2006 so it is a quite uh, shocking news so under three article under article 371 uh, uh, clause g of the constitution Mizoram has a provision which makes it uh, it mandatory for lower legislations of parliament to land ownership and transfer to be first, first passed by the state's assembly through a resolution before it can be implemented in the state so all those uh, laws that are made by the parliament relating to land ownership and transfer they are to be passed by state assembly first the state government has used this provision of the constitution to pass a resolution to revoke forest rights act from the state now let's move to the next question next is answer the following statements first west bank is a landlocked territory near the mediterranean coast of western asia second the west bank also contains a significant section of the uh, western dead sea shore so we have to choose that which of the statements is correct so both of these statements are correct so the answer is d so uh, united states has told that it, it no longer thinks that israeli settlements in the west bank violate international law obviously us is the uh, time tested ally of israel and why it will say that uh, that they think so the new uh, the new us view is different from that of most countries on this issue so uh, in 1978 and 1981 uh, the us had taken opposite stands so where is ba west bank so it is a landlocked territory near the mediterranean coast of western asia bordered by jordan to the east and the, by the green line separating it and israel on the southwest and the north so west bank also contains a significant section of the western dead sea so sure so more details you can read by pausing the video now let's move to the next question next is uh, uh, but this is explanation is quite lengthy. Next is consider the following statements. First, the surplus distribution of Reserve Bank of India is determined in accordance with Section 47 of the RBI Act 1934. Second, Section 7 of the RBI Act empowers the central government to issue directions to the RBI in public interest. So this this uh, um, RBI Act is in news uh, for quite long time now. Uh, so I expect that you must be knowing its answer. So we have to choose that which of these statements is incorrect. So all both these statements are correct. So none of them is uh, the answer. So oh, that means all are correct. So section 7 of RBI Act empowers central government to issue directions to RBI in public interest. So it has two parts that is consultation and then issuing a direction to the RBI for taking some action in public interest. So surplus distribution of pol uh, sur surplus distribution policy of the RBI is determined in accordance with section 47 of the RBI Act 1934. It says that after making provision for bad and doubtful debts, depreciation in assets, contribu contributions to staffs and superannuation funds and for all other matters 
matters for which provision is to be made by or under this act or which are usually provided for by the bankers the balance of the profits shall be provided to the central government so extra knowledge is that union finance minister informed lok sabha that the informed lok sabha the transfer of surplus reserve from rbi to the government in future would depend upon the net income and other financial par- parameters of the rbi besides the recommendations of the expert committee on excess capital now let's move to the next question next is which of the following statements are correct about national skill development corporation uh, nsdc is public private partnership under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship second it was founded in 2009 as not for profit company by ministry of finance to address the need for providing skilled manpower across the industry sector second the third is its objective is to create training capacity in the country fund vocational training initiatives and create market ecosystem for skill development fourth its mandate is to train 150 million people by 2022 so we have to choose the, that which of these statements are correct so all of these statements are correct so nsdc uh, is basically a public private partnership and it is under ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship so it was founded in 2009 as not for profit company the ministry of finance to address the need for providing skilled manpower so government of india through uh, this uh, msde that is ministry of skill development and entrepreneur holds 49% of share uh, uh, capital in um, nsdc that is national skill development corporation while private sector has balanced 51% of the share in the capital so nsdc aims to promote skill development by catalyzing creation of large quality um, and for profit vocational institutions it is its objective is to create training capacity in the country fund vocational training initiatives and create market ecosystem for skill development and its mandate is to train 150 million people by 2022 so it is also involved in reskilling and also in catering to skilled manpower requirement of overseas overseas markets most notably that of uh, japan and the titp and uae so extra knowledge is that according to an internal study conducted by national skill development corporation so just one out of five persons in 50 to 30 years age bracket entering the labor force is expected to be a female in the five years ending 2023 so national skill development corporation is a public private partnership working uh, uh, under the ages of ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship so uh, public private partnership in the manner that, uh, that the government hold 49% share and 51% share is held by the private sector so key finding uh, are that 7 crore additional individuals in the working age population are expected to enter the labor force by the 2023 so which uh, 84.3% or uh, uh, 5.9 crore will be in the age group of 15 to 30 so only six states are expected to account for 50% of the new youth entrants so more details you can read by pausing the video now let's move to the last question last question is consider the following statements first the sambar salt lake india's the largest inland salt lake is located 80 km southwest of the city of jaipur rajasthan second it surrounds the historical sambar lake town third sambar lake has been designated as ramsar site recognized wetland of international importance so which of these statements is not correct let me tell you friend that all of these statements are correct so the answer is d none of them is incorrect so that means all are correct so in news because in november 2019 nearly 10000 migratory birds were found dead mysteriously in the sambar salt lake area so until november 19 rajasthan government had uh, using various agencies buried a total of uh, Um, 17,000 dead birds to prevent the spread of the infection. So clinical signs exhibited by affected birds included dullness, depression, and anorexia, flaccid paralysis in legs and wings, and neck touching the ground. So uh, the birds were unable to walk, swim, or take flight. So investigations so far point to avian brutalism, a paralytic, uh, frequently fatal disease caused by ingestion of toxins, as a possible cause. So this has, uh, however, not been officially confirmed. So Sambar Lake India's largest inland salt lake is located 80 km southwest of the city of Jaipur Rajasthan so this is quite shocking news So friends this is all about today's discussion so the obviously video has 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 been extended to has become quite long so if you like this discussion then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and lastly friends we have a telegram channel the link of which is shown on your screen here here we have more than 15000 subscribers that follow us and uh, they get regular updates about various initiatives that are run that are run by us for the purpose of csc preparation so you can uh, check the link in the description box and can join this telegram channel and also you can visit our website that, that, that is www.gyes.co.in for daily current affairs news analysis and uh, for various other things and also you can if you have any doubts then you can contact us on these details so you are more than welcome and lastly do ensure to subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead